now it's time to look in more detail at uh, remote invocation and uh, met message sending and um, sub paradigms how they can be divided further uh, and also we'll look at um, different technologies and products used for, for uh, remote invocation and for message sending so this is really a, a jungle there are loads of different technologies and uh, what uh, I'm going to do in this video is just one way of categorizing them. Okay, uh, let's first look at the uh, remote invocation. So it can be divided into two uh, sub paradigms. Actually, there are more, but uh, only we will only mention two in this course. Uh, the first is remote procedure call or uh, RPC. So that is not object oriented. It means that uh, in the procedural language you are calling a procedure or f like a C function in another network node. So uh, there are different such technologies uh, with uh, Sun Microsystems or in there was first Sun RPC created in the 80s which uh, later evolved into uh, Open Network Computing or ONC in the mid 90s which is still used and maintained. To what extent it is, it is used uh, I will not comment on that Right, so then we have with uh, Microsoft Orin Distributed Computing Environment or DCE uh, from the early 90s which in the late 90s became XML RPC which, which was uh, basically XML over HTTP uh, which in turn uh, involved into SOAP around the, the turn of the millennium so SOAP is basically XML over HTTP or SMTP or can also be other carrier protocols. Uh, so SOAP originally meant simple object access protocol but is uh, no longer an acronym <laughs> since it is not simple anymore uh, because it has in turn evolved into a plethora of uh, web service standards which are sometimes summarized under the name uh, WS dash asterisk because there are loads of WS something standards so this is the origin of the web services specifications then we have uh, remote method invocation or RMI which is the object oriented correspondence to remote procedure call uh, wh where we call not uh, like a function on uh, a remote node but uh, a method in, the, uh, in an object on a remote node so uh, also here we have uh, technologies with the Sun and Microsoft or in but there is also an open standard not belonging to any specific company so let's start with that one and that's the common object request broker architecture so, uh, which is uh, uh, shortened CORBA so the full name is very seldom used it's uh, normally called the CORBA uh, which was created in the early 90s by the uh, open management group OMG which is a, a standards organization behind uh, many other things as well. For example, uh, they are also the creators of the UML, Unified Modeling Language, that is very much used to um, model software. So CORBA was a very hot and promising technology in, in the 90s, but it, it unfortunately never really took off. The, there were many problems. It, it became complex. There were there were, were internal fights within the OMG about the standard. There were fi firewall problems and incompatibilities between different implementations and, and so on. So it, so it never really took off. Okay, then we have again by Sun Orin Java RMI, uh, Java Remote Method Invocation, which is part of the JDK and which is still part of the JDK and is still used to some extent but again maybe not as much as one originally would have thought. It's not very common I think to write a, an application that uses Java RMI directly. Java RMI is sometimes used as car carrier service inside uh, application service and, and so on. But we will anyway have a closer look at, at uh, Java RMI uh, in, in this course because it's a very good and relatively easy to use example of a remote method invocation which is an important paradigm. Uh, then with uh, Microsoft or in there is the distributed component object model or DCOM from the early 90s but uh, one would say that Microsoft didn't really take that path that but they instead took that path or rather that path 
web services. So that was uh, an attempt at a summary of uh, remote invocation technologies. One could say that um, remote method invocation was once upon a time was very promising but never really took off maybe because of the space coupling and time coupling so there was no space and cup uncoupling and no time uncoupling and it's quite hard to make make it asynchronous you can call a void remote method and continue executing immediately but what about exceptions and uh, network failures you, do you know that the remote method was actually invoked and what it if if it threw an exception mm, remote procedure call on the other hand still very much lives on in the form of the web services standards so of all this, maybe what is really used today to a bigger extent is the web services. So next, let's consider message sending technologies. Remember there were two flavors or two sub-paradigms of message sending, direct and indirect. And this uh, diagram here illustrates the indirect version where there is such a man in the middle message broker. So the sender contacts the message broker which contacts the receiver. On the other hand, the uh, direct version has no such broker but the sender sends directly to the receiver. Direct message sending is uh, not considered in this course. Just mention two such technologies. One is MPI, message passing interface, which is a C library providing direct message sending to the C language. Uh, another one is the language Erlang, which has uh, direct message sending built into the language itself. Let's instead focus on indirect message sending that has a message broker. The types of brokers can be divided into two categories, which are often termed the traditional message broker and the modern message broker. And uh, it should be emphasized here that uh, traditional and modern does not mean worse and better in this case, but uh, has been around for a longer time or for a shorter time. Characterizing of traditional message brokers is that they have a lot of functionality, like for example point-to-point uh, -point messaging, sending sender to receiver, uh, broadcast sender to multiple receiver, publish to a topic which multiple receivers can subscribe to and and so on. They also often perform persistence in transactions, security and such things. Yeah, uh, lots of different routing functionality and lots of different uh, non-functional requirements. And the traditional message brokers are generally faster than uh, modern message brokers for lower loads when there are not so many messages per time unit. On the other hand, modern message brokers provide uh, less functionality and are faster uh, than traditional message brokers for high load. Roughly one, one could say that traditional message brokers are more used for enterprise integration, integrating different servers and systems, whereas modern message brokers are more used for data processing, handling huge streams of data. Typical examples of uh, traditional message brokers are ActiveMQ from Apache, MQ as in message queue, and another example is uh, RabbitMQ from a company called Pivota, but it is open source. Examples of uh, modern message brokers are uh, Kafka from Apache and uh, Amazon SQS. Uh, SQS is short for Simple Queue Service. Uh, okay, so those were some examples and the defining characteristics of message brokers. So now let's have a look at different protocols for message sending. The advanced uh, message queuing protocol AMQP is an open standard that is implemented by uh, many message queuing uh, products and is very widely used. It is um, very extensive, has lots of functionality. Uh, it's a binary protocol that defines the wire level format and is often used over TCP. So another protocol is uh, Message Queue Telemetry Transport, MQTT, which is a very lightweight protocol often used for IoT communication, for communicating with uh, IoT devices. Yet another protocol is STOMP, Streaming Text Oriented Messaging Protocol, which uh, has less functionality than AMQP and uh, also as opposed to AMQP 
is uh, text-based, but it is also very widely used, just like AMQP. Another protocol is Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol, XMPP, which also is widely used with many implementations. It consists of XML messages over either TCP or HTTP or WebSockets. The name originates from the fact that it was originally created for instant messaging and presence information, that is, if the user is online or not. Due to its extensibility, it has been used also for many different domains, like for example gaming or Internet of Things. Those were some protocols used by message queues. Uh, another thing that should be mentioned together with protocols, maybe uh, because this is communication standard that can be supported by message brokers, is a JMS, Java uh, Messaging Service. But it isn't a, a protocol in reality, uh, instead it's an API specification specification of Java methods uh, that can be implemented by a JMS implementation uh, and it, it is a way to call a message broker from a Java program. It does not say anything about which messaging protocol is used on the wire to communicate between brokers and endpoints. So as you can see this messaging domain is really a jungle. There are lots of different protocols and products. That concludes our coverage of uh, frameworks for inter-process communication. However, before leaving the, the subject there are a few more things uh, worth mentioning. First, I would like to point out that um, Framework is a very general term. It can be any technology performing an anything, more or less. Frameworks for remote invocation are often called object-oriented middleware, OOM. Okay, so it's involves, of course, all this. And uh, such frameworks for message sending are often called message-oriented middleware, MOM. OOM and MOM are acronyms one should be aware of. And of these two, as uh, has been said, uh, message-oriented middleware is by far the dominating paradigm today. We are done with the middleware and the frameworks now, but I would like also to mention a, a few other communication technologies that are extremely widely used and therefore my, one might wonder how do they fit in in all this. First we've already talked a lot about the socket-based communication and uh, one could say that using plain TCP or UDP sockets is, is uh, kind of, of direct message sending. One extremely common technology is of course HTML over HTTP, the whole World Wide Web. So it is a very mature technology. Uh, we are not required to write any infrastructure code when using it because there are loads of frameworks both for browsers and uh, web servers. Lots uh, of implementations, browsers and servers exist. Uh, we don't have any firewall problem and it's very frequently used. We can count on more or less anyone to have a browser. Great, but the, the downside then is the client-server architecture. I mean, it, it's very request-response oriented, HTML or HTTP. Uh, and of course, it's also very view oriented. So it's not, not, it's not appropriate for communication between services. We can say that there is some amount of space uncoupling. We can use host names instead of IP addresses and then the host name is not tied to a physical location. But there is no time uncoupling. And the browser and the web server must be up at the same time. Uh, and uh, there is no persistence. Another technology is AJAX, which is an acronym for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, which is uh, for communication between browsers and servers, but not view-oriented communication, but instead data-centric, just transferring any message not uh, formatted as a view. It's normally JSON over HTTP, in spite of the name. AJAX is also request response oriented. Generally it's not so useful for push notifications from server to browser. So AJAX is being replaced by WebSockets. A WebSocket connection is a full duplex channel between browser and something else, for example the server and or another browser. So WebSockets is becoming increasingly more uh, used, uh, even though maybe not at the pace one would have anticipated a few years ago. Uh, it drives the uh, development of single-page applications. Using WebSockets and uh, JavaScript turns the browser into a node in a distributed system of, of peers rather than just a view. Because we can execute any code in JavaScript, any performance, any updates to the view in the browser, 
and we have full duplex communication. WebSockets is message based, it's not stream like TCP but instead message sending like message queue. Uh, but WebSockets on its own is not more than a transport feature. It, it is a socket, not a, a middleware. Um, but we can use some other technology on top of WebSockets, for example the STOM protocol, which was one of the protocols used for message brokers. So using such a protocol, we turn the browser into a node in a messaging system. So WebSockets is a very useful and promising technology. Since WebSockets is just a carrier service, low-level transport feature, we need a client to use together with WebSockets in the browser. Uh, that uses another protocol on top of WebSockets like Stomp or AMQP and then it can communicate with some uh, message broker. So an interesting such technology is the Kassing WebSocket Gateway. So the Kassing WebSocket Gateway is like a message broker that is able to connect to a very large number of WebSockets and then also connect to some existing message queue or other enterprise service and supports for example the AMQP uh, protocol. So this is a commercial product uh, delivered by the Kassing company, uh, but uh, it's free to try and uh, evaluate. So one last thing before we conclude this attempt to cover the jungle of, of um, uh, communication frameworks. And the last thing is REST. REST means representational state transfer. And actually it's an architectural pattern or a paradigm rather than a protocol or technology. REST is often mentioned, like uh, you use RESTful web services to communicate between a server and an app Android app or, or things like that. So what, what that often means is uh, the protocol that is often used with the REST architecture, which is XML or JSON or HTML or something else over HTTP. So one uh, interesting feature of this architecture is that the state can be transferred using XML or JSON or HTML or whatever. So well, used just to get data, it's kind of simplified web service, you could say. Complete implementation of the architecture creates surprisingly easily some kind of object-oriented HTTP, you can say, which is very powerful, especially when there are no complex interactions, but rather CRUD, create, read, update, delete uh, data. So it has the amount of space uncoupling that HTTP has, has no time uncoupling or persistency or things like that. And it is request response based. Okay, so that finally concludes our coverage of the jungle of remote invocation and message sending technologies.